Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about accounting for merchandising businesses. So first, let us define what merchandising business is. It's also known as a trading business, so basically, it's engaged in the buying and selling of finished goods. You, um, these businesses gain an income based on the resale of goods at a profit. And so you have to take note that with merchandising businesses, we have the merchandise inventory account, which is an asset under current assets presented after accounts receivable. So basically, merchandise inventory are the goods that the business is selling. And now we look at the business documents involved in a merchandising concern. So first are the official receipts or ORs, which are basically documents you issue when there is a receipt of cash. And then we have sales invoice or purchase invoice, which are basically the same thing. It just varies depending on what perspective you're taking. So if you're a seller, it's a sales invoice. If you're a buyer, it's a purchase invoice. So these documents state the items, the quantity purchased or sold, the unit price, or the total um, sales uh, or purchases, and other details. And then we have the credit memo, which is sent by the seller. Um, it's kind of a notice of reduction in the buyer's account. So if you have a credit memo, it's indicative of a sales return. And then the debit memo is similar to the credit memo, only it is issued by the buyer. So if the credit memo um, is indicative of a sales return, a debit memo is indicative of a purchase return. And then we have the promissory notes, which um, maybe everybody is familiar with. It's basically a written promise to pay. And then we have a check which I think everyone is also familiar with. It's basically an order to the bank signed by the maker to pay the bearer a certain amount of money. And then lastly, we have the cash register slip, which is an evidence that money was received. So this document has the date of receipt as well as the amount. It must be noted that there are two inventory systems that merchandising concerns employ. So they could employ either the periodic system or the perpetual system. So what is the difference? Basically, in a periodic system, you have to count the goods physically at the end of the accounting period. This is because you do not keep track of the movements in merchandise inventory throughout the year. All your purchases are recorded in the purchases account. On the other hand, for perpetual inventory, you have a merchandise inventory account where all your purchases or goods sold are recorded. This system requires the maintenance of records called stock cards that usually offer a running summary of the inventory inflow and outflow. So it calls for the update of the merchandise inventory account whenever there's a purchase or a sale. So in short, you keep track of the movement in the inventory account. This system, the perpetual inventory system, is actually optimal for, um, for businesses that sell low numbers but high value goods. And now we look at accounting for the, and now we look at accounting under the periodic inventory system. So for example, if you have a purchase of merchandise, as I said before, you have to use the purchase account. So you make a debit to purchases, and then you credit either accounts payable or cash depending on the terms of purchase. And then you have the return of merchandise purchased. So here you have a new account, which is purchase returns and allowances, which you have to take note of. So since you return the merchandise, you are receiving either cash or a reduction in your accounts payable. So you debit either cash or accounts payable, and then you credit purchase returns and allowances. This is a contra-asset account, which is presented 
um, which is deducted from your purchases account to get net purchases. And then you have the return of merchandise purchase. So when you return a merchandise, you receive cash or a reduction in your accounts payable. Therefore, you need to debit cash or accounts payable. And then you have to credit purchase returns and allowances. This is a contra asset account against purchases. So this is actually um, deducted from purchases to get your net purchases. And then we have the sale of merchandise. Um, so it's a normal uh, sale transaction. So you basically debit cash or accounts receivable and credit sales. And then lastly, we have the return of sold merchandise. So you simply make a debit to sales return and allowances, which is another account you want to take note of, and credit cash or accounts receivable depending on what you return to your customer. The sales return and allowances is, is deducted from your sales to get your net sales. And another concept related to merchandising business would be your VAT or the value added tax. So it's an indirect tax meaning you could transfer the liability to the other person. So most businesses choose to transfer the liability to the customers. So instead, we as customers pay for the VAT. And in the Philippines, we pay VAT at a fixed rate of 12%. So who are required to pay the VAT? So basically, anyone with a gross revenue of 1.5 million every year has to pay the VAT. And they must register with the Bureau of Internal Revenue or the BIR. If a VAT exempt entity registered as VAT re registered, then they still have to pay the VAT. So the formula to get VAT is basically the amount gross of VAT divided by 1.12 multiplied by 0 0.12. Or if you have the amount net of VAT, you simply multiply that by 12%. There are two types of VAT, which are input VAT and output VAT. So basically input VAT would be used for purchases while output VAT would be used for sales. So here is an example. Example is you purchased 10,000 pesos worth of supplies, 12% VAT. So in this case, the VAT is not yet included in the amount of 10,000. Therefore, you need to debit supplies at 10,000 and you need to debit a separate amount for VAT of 1,200, which you got by multiplying 12% to 10,000. Since it was a purchase, the account title would be input VAT. And then you simply make a credit of cash for 11,200 pesos. And here is an, another example we have here for output VAT, which is for sales. So example, you sold goods for 10,000 pesos, inclusive of 12% VAT. So it means that 10,000 is already the total of all your sales plus the VAT. So you simply make a debit to cash for 10,000 and then credit to sales for 8,928.57, which you got by deducting the VAT from 10,000 pesos. And then credit output VAT for 1,071.43, which we got by dividing 10,000 by 1.12 and multiplying 12% VAT rate. It's important to note that there are account titles that should always be presented as net of VAT, which means VAT should always be removed from these amounts. So these account titles include purchases, purchase returns and allowances, purchase discount, freight in, sales, sales returns and allowances, sales discount, store supplies, and your PPE. And the last topic to take note of would be your freight. So there are two main terms that you need to take note of, which means free on board and collect or prepaid. So when you talk about free on board, basically you're talking about who will sh shoulder the freight. If it's free on board shipping point, it means that the buyer will shoulder the cost since the shipping point or the seller is free of the responsibility to pay the freight. 
if it's free on board destination point or free on board buyer then that would mean the buyer is free of the obligation to pay the freight meaning the seller carries the liability for freight costs on the other hand collect and prepaid would have something to do with who paid the cash for the freight so if it's collect it means the buyer paid in advance well for prepaid it means it's the seller who paid and now we look at four possibilities or four combinations if it's free on board shipping point and it's collect it means that the buyer has the obligation to pay for the freight and it's the buyer who paid for the freight therefore the buyer has no liability to, to the seller and the seller also has no liability towards the buyer if it's free on board shipping point it means that the buyer has the obligation to pay the freight however it's prepaid meaning the seller paid for the freight it means that the buyer has the liability to the seller and then for the third um, possibility if you have FOB destination point it means that the obligation for the freight is on the seller but it's collect it means that the buyer paid for the freight meaning the seller has an obligation towards the buyer lastly if it's FOB destination point it means that the seller has the obligation to pay for the freight if it's prepaid it means that the seller paid for the freight it means um, he doesn't owe the buyer any obligation and like um, and vice versa the buyer does not owe the seller anything So that's basically it for merchandising concerns and I hope you learned something.